What's up you guys, it's Matt here. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the 15 simple rules of finance and how this is gonna be a big benefit to you and how you can eventually save more money and make more money at the same time by doing this. So um, before I start, hit that like button, it helps me out tremendously. Also, comment down below and let me know what you thought of this video if you have any tips for anyone else that is really interested in personal finance. Help them out, shoot me a comment down below, talk to everyone else down below. Uh, think of the comment section as a community, so go ahead and shoot me a comment. Also, hit that subscribe button because I'm doing a giveaway, which I can get into at the end. So simple rules of personal finance. This is something that a lot of people don't know and you need to know. Um, and even if they feel like they do know, they don't follow the rules. I know I missed some of these rules from time to time. I follow most of them as best as possible. But if you follow all of them, it's gonna help you out dramatically and it's gonna change your life, I promise you. So let's not waste any more time. I don't want you to sit in front of this screen for too much longer. I want you to go and take action and you know go into your budget, really understand your finances and understand what you're doing and what you're not doing when it comes to this list. So the first rule that you wanna do is you want to spend less than you make. Simple, right? You wanna spend less than you make. It's really simple, but a lot of people don't follow it at all. They see all of these different credit lines, they see how much money they're gonna potentially have and they spend the money before they get it. It's just like if someone wins the lottery, they'll go out and spend as much money as they can on like credit cards and stuff because they know that they can pay it off. That's not how you wanna treat your finances. You wanna treat them as if you don't have the money yet and you spend it where you need it. Um, maybe you have a few wants here and there, but mostly where you need it and worry about saving money, putting money aside so that you have room to spend money on what you want later in life. The second thing is that you wanna help your future self. Don't expect your future self to help you. Um, basically, it goes back to my first point. Um, if you expect that you're gonna bring money in, then you can spend all you want here and expect that you're just gonna pay it off later. You don't wanna do that. You don't wanna expect your future self, your future income to cover all of the expenses you had in the present. That doesn't make sense. Don't do it. Spend what you need to spend, help out your future self. If you're putting money in the savings, in your savings account, in a high interest savings anywhere, then you're gonna help out your future self. Um, they're gonna have more money or you in the future is gonna have more money and you're gonna be able to spend it on whatever you want. I'm not saying you go and spend recklessly then because then you're not helping out your future future self and your future 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 self and your future 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 self a long time, you're gonna be able to help you in the future, no matter how many generations you go on. You just don't want to put yourself into a hole to where your future self has to dig you right back out. You don't wanna have help from anybody. I don't like to get help from anybody, so why should I expect to get help from my future self? That's just annoying. Just don't do it. Number three, build an emergency fund. You need to make sure you have money aside because anything could happen. And there's a bunch of people that depend on credit for this. If their car breaks down, if their house um, suddenly catches on fire, they don't have insurance, whatever may happen. If something um, really difficult or really hard to deal with happens, you're gonna need that money in order to pay it off and get back to your normal life. So always have an emergency fund available. So always have so always have an emergency fund available. Trust me, this comes in handy. They always say put your money in a rainy day uh, fund, but you're not gaining any interest there. If you wanna do it that way, you feel like it's safe, then do it that way. But if you wanna do it a better way, just put it into a high interest savings account that you don't look at very often, and you're gonna gain interest as you have it away in that rainy day fund, in that emergency fund. So do it that way, save money, and be prepared for the worst. So number four, always kill your high interest debt. This is tough to deal with because a lot of people have credit cards and they have a ton of different credit cards to where they need to consolidate things or whatever. Um, just pay off that debt and pay off your student loans, pay off whatever is considered high interest, personal loans, everything. Don't leave that hang because if you have any interest, it's just gonna eat away at the amount of money that you're gaining, amount of interest that you're gaining. So just kill all of your high interest debt. I guarantee this is gonna help you out in a big way if you do this. The next thing is something that I promote, which is kind of like all of this, but um, I have two videos on building a budget. That's number five, build a budget. If you have 
something in place to where you know how much your bills are, you know how much you need to spend. And then you'll know how much you wanna spend and you also know how much you can save. I have the different rules, the different budgeting rules, and if you can figure out this, if you can build your budget and know how much you need to spend, then you'll know how much room you have in order to save money. So build a budget, help yourself out, help your family out by doing this budget, but you have to maintain it, that's the difficult part. A lot of people don't maintain the budget. I struggled from time to time. This damn dog. I struggled from time to time um, staying with my budget because sometimes I get too busy and I don't go back to the budget. And then I go back to it and I realize that I spent too much in that month, but I didn't manage it. Number six is figure out your true hourly wage because you know, you're factoring in the fact if you make $20 an hour, you're not really making $20 an hour. You have taxes, you have driving home, you have all these different expenses you use to get to work, to do all the different things, to eat, all of those different expenses you need to add in to your work. Basically, treat your work as a P&L for itself. You have your income, you have your expenses or anything that you're paying, and then what's your bottom line when it comes to work income. Figure that out and you'll be on your way. Number seven is to set goals, uh, mainly savings goals. If you have a certain amount that you wanna save a goal, then do that. If you wanna contribute a certain amount to your 401k, then do that. But you always need to make sure you set a goal, no matter what that goal is. It could be short term, it could be long term, but you wanna set a bunch of goals. Um, if you wanna save $1,000 a month, then save $1,000 a month. If you wanna save $10 a month, save $10 a month. But save something, set some goal, it's gonna help you out because once you have those goals, you'll know exactly how long it's gonna to take till you reach it. And if you're there already, then good for you. So. Set goals, it helps you out. Number eight, set a meal plan. This goes for at home and at work. If you're packing lunches, make sure you set something to where it's you know cost effective to where you're not spending too much money and then go back to your house to where you can package your lunches or portion out your lunches in a certain way and you're not spending too much money on your meals, on your dinner, on lunches at home, on breakfast, on whatever you eat. If you don't eat breakfast, you don't eat breakfast. Um, but Make sure you portion your meals, make sure you plan your meals um, because this helps you out in a big way. Number nine kind of feeds into that. Don't ever go to the grocery store without a list or when you're hungry. So if you go to grocery stores without a list, you start picking things out like cookies and cakes and snacks and ice cream and all this other stuff that you don't really need or you didn't even want when you went there. So create a list, know exactly what you're getting. Don't go away from that list, don't fall away from that list, stay on it and you'll be able to save a lot of money because you'll notice that you spent $250 at the grocery store the one week you went there um, and then this time you made a list and you spent $150 or $100 because you didn't buy all those extra things that you didn't really need or you didn't really eat the last time you got it. So go to the grocery store with a list. Trust me, it helps. Number 10, don't care about how other people spend their money or um, how they think about you spending your money. Just stay on track, don't worry about them, don't worry about other people, because if you do, you're just gonna feel like you're not spending enough money, you're not doing enough things for your family, and it tends to, to hurt your pockets, basically. Um, because if you go out to the bowling alley or they go out to the bowling alley and you don't wanna go because you don't wanna spend money, um, then, you know, you can't worry about what they're thinking. If they come back and say, oh, well, you know, live a little bit, spend some money. No, I'm trying to save money because I want a better future for my family. If you have the money to be able to spend and you know that's something that you planned throughout the month or two months prior, then go ahead and do it. But if you didn't plan it, don't do it. Number 11 is you need to set time every month in order to review yourself, review your own finances, understand your situation. Because if you're living with people, you just need to understand what you're spending and what you're doing wrong because you need to evaluate and drill down to the different areas. Because if you're spending a lot on fast food, who's doing it? Is it you? Is it your wife? Is it your children? Is it your grandma? Is it somebody that's in your house that's on 
your bank statement or has your bank card, um, they're spending a certain amount of money and you need to be able to evaluate this. So go into your finances first, then worry about other people's finances, but you need to evaluate yourself and understand that you're still on track because it's all dependent on you. And if you're a hypocrite and tell them not to spend on fast food, but you're spending on fast food, then that's just not a good look. So make sure you're on track. Number 12 is start a little side hustle. And when I say side hustle, I mean you need to like do like a YouTube channel, have passive income, um, also understand different areas to where you can make money, whether it's real estate, investing in stocks, um, putting your money into a high interest savings account, something to where you have a little bit more money and you can put more money towards other things. Just start something. It could be Uber, it could be mowing lawns, anything. There's a bunch of videos out there that explain um, how you can make more money just by a little side hustle or an extra $100 a day, $100 a week, whatever your plan may be. Number 13, I don't think really works, so I'm gonna change it up. The rule is the 10 second rule, and if you don't know what the 10 second rule is, basically, before you put it into your cart, when you're at the store, before you put something into your cart that you feel like you want, wait 10 seconds and then go and buy it. But my rule is you have to wait a day. So if you want something, you go back home, you think about it, you wait a day and see, is it worth it? Um, if it's something small, like a, a $10 purchase, maybe that might not be the case. You might need a 10 second rule because it's not a huge purchase. But if it's something like a hundred, two hundred dollars $200, then you need that full day to think about it and say, is it worth it? Because a lot of times you're gonna go back and just go, eh, it's not worth it. I don't need it right now. I can get it later in my life and it actually doesn't help me out. So adopt the 10 second or the full day rule. Really help yourself out by doing this because you're going to find that you're going to put a lot of things back because what I tend to do um, now I adopt this rule, but I used to just go and buy it and then I would get all the way up to register and say, oh, I don't really need this. So basically that's the 10 second rule in my mind, if I would have just stood there before I put it in the cart and just said, hmm, do I need this? I would have put it back. Most likely I would have put it back. Uh, number 14 is actually a part of that. Now, they also say that there's a 30 day rule. You basically wait 30 days before you buy something really expensive. So if it's a thousand dollar purchase or $2,000 purchase, you need time to think about it. Is it gonna help you out? Are you gonna get your money's worth by doing it? Like for me, I bought a simulator that was close to $2,000. Is it worth it? I don't go to the driving range anymore. If you're not familiar with what simulator I'm talking about, it's a golf simulator. So I don't go to the driving range anymore and that was $10 each time I went. So if I don't go to the driving range, I'm saving money on that. So it's gonna take me a while to get up to that point, but I can play, um, I can basically hit balls at a driving range in a simulator and I can play on a course. So um, during, Sometimes when it's raining, when I still end up choosing to go out because I love the game of golf, um, I can play inside and play like PGA Tour courses and you know get my money's worth there. So um, I think that's worth it. And if it's a big purchase, just wait 30 days. But I did wait um, a long while before I actually bought this and um, weighed my options. Am I gonna be paying interest? How can I get around this? Um, can I pay monthly without paying interest? Which I could, so that made a huge benefit into the purchase. So always think about it, 30 day rule. Um, let's go back to number 13, the 10 second rule, the one day rule, and the 30 day rule. Adopt all of them and they will help you out. And finally, number 15 is to share your goals with your inner circle, with the people closest to you, your friends, your family, the people that really motivate you, because what they're gonna do is push your back and say, look, you don't need to get that because we know your goals. We know where you stand. We know what you wanna accomplish, so don't do it. So they're not gonna push you in the wrong direction because they're people that are really close to you. They want you to be a better version of yourself. So there you have it guys, those are the 15 rules of personal finance. They're really simple. All of these rules are something that I adopted uh, a while back and if I do uh, stray from the path, then you know I kinda try and catch myself up. I'm not gonna say that I follow these rules 100% because sometimes I don't wait 30 days on a big purchase. Sometimes I don't wait you know, one day on that big purchase. I want it now, that's what a lot of people think. But I try and do that for the most part, 90, 95% of the time, I'm gonna do it. Um, I'm gonna really understand my finances, build my budget, work around my budget, and make sure I'm saving the right amount. And if you do that, 
you're gonna be on the right path. So hopefully you like this video. If you do, hit the like button. It helps me out tremendously. Also, comment down below and let me know what you thought of these 15 rules. If you have any rules that we should add to it, shoot me a comment down below. Also, consider hitting that subscribe button because I'm doing a giveaway of two, you know what, five Amazon gift cards when I hit my 5,000 subscriber mark. So. Put your name in the hat for that. You don't wanna miss out on this opportunity. I just gave out two Amazon gift cards prior to this for my 1,000 subscriber mark. So put your name in the hat for 5,000 subscribers. Um, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.